Hi, David Bizard here, and you guys are watching Power Attack 10. In this episode, uh, this will be 190, wow, approaching the 200, uh, I'm going to start my mini-series on whether or not the 100 mile per gallon carburetor is fact or fiction. Now, before I go any further, let me tell you how I got onto this. I was going to start modifying a set of trick flow Ford heads for a 347 that I'm slowly putting together. I've chosen these trick flow heads because they and the Edelbrock Victor heads on the dyno showed excellent results on a four. 427 inch small block. Now, I did these engines with a cup car guy friend of mine and I was thinking, well, I'll replicate this, what we did there, but on a 347 because I've got a good block. And uh, just going through my email this morning and I got an email from a guy saying he'd read my uh, stuff on my economy mini and didn't think it was that special because his s10 he could get 100 miles per gallon i have to tell you i've had plenty of people say they're in the 100 mile per gallon club you know it's almost as exclusive as the mile high club and uh, tell me they get 100 to the gallon well you know every time i ask one of these guys come and demonstrate it what i want you to do is drive at a constant speed on the freeway whatever your choice is, and show me how you can do 50 miles on half a gallon, or conversely, 25 miles on quarter of a gallon. No coasting downhill, nothing. I'm talking about flat road, no wind, show me. None of them ever turn up. They come up with excuses here, there, and everywhere. So, I have yet to see that 100 miles per gallon. So, now I'm going to start doing this mini-series and I'm going to start off by defining what we mean by a hundred mile per gallon carburetor. Let's start with what I can best describe as the basis for this myth or magic, whichever it may be. That is that sometime between the wars some guy came up with a carburetor that gave a hundred miles per gallon and it was bought up by the gas companies or the government to stabilize gas prices and to prevent the economy from going belly up. Now, it sounds like something that would happen if you're, a, now let me see how to pronounce this, a conspiracist, yes, by nature. And, you know, I, I have several on my, uh, people I know. One guy absolutely drives me mad. He, he tells me all the time that the world's not overcrowded. It can support 20 million people. Well, it may, maybe it can. That's like putting too many people on a ship and not having enough lifeboats. Sure, if nothing happens, they're safe. One hiccup and 19.9 .9 billion people could die. There's no need to have a planet with that many people. Just none whatsoever. Um, so, but not all conspiracies are lies. I mean, let's look at some of the political so-called conspiracies that have gone by lately. Some of them have proved to be more than true. So we can't rule out a conspiracy. But it's not, it's not unlikely and I can talk about having a good idea bought out from personal experience. I designed a muffler which worked very, 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 very well. The company that I sold the rights to and the patents were earning about 100000 a year. Not, not a bad, uh, uh, how shall I say, side job there. And, and that was 20 years ago. And guess what? even though the company I was doing this for was pretty big, 
you know, multi, multi million dollars a year. It got bought out by an even bigger company. In fact, I think the company concerned was the biggest muffler company in the world, period. At least second anyway. So it got bought out and suddenly I wasn't making that income. So these buyouts are a fact of life, but are they exaggerated? That's my question here. Now, let's get on to whether or not it's provable. Because a lot of these conspiracies conspiracies get hidden under a whole load of paperwork. And, uh, and basically getting to the truth of the matter is difficult. Well, let me give you something of a carrot to hang in front of you here. I have absolutely 100% positive proof of which way this myth went. Was it true? Was it false? After I finish this series, there will be no doubt about whether or not it's true. However, we have to define what we mean by 100 miles per gallon carburetor. Because there are already carburetors that exist on vehicles that you can get 200 miles per gallon from. You say, wait, where are they? Let's take a moped. 2.5 horsepower, top speed, maybe 32, 33 miles an hour. They will do 200 to the gallon if driven, you know, uh, uh, moderately quickly. They'll do 200 to the gallon. And I had a friend that modified one and he put a, a pint of fuel in and drove it until it, and rode it until it ran out, doing about 20 miles an hour. And he got just over 300 to the gallon. Well, that's one person going just over 20 miles an hour, right? I'm going to talk about whether or not it's possible for a car at any speed to do 100 to the gallon. Now, let's not take a Cadillac here. That's ridiculous. But let's assume a four-seat car that will, will seat four adults, a reasonable amount of luggage, and have a performance that is at least as good as average, maybe slightly better. We'll say, has to be able to do zero to 60 in 10 seconds. That's with a driver and one passenger, which is not too shabby. So that's our groundwork there. So what are we gonna look at for the carburetor? That means, it's got to be an efficient carburetor at part throttle, right? Because you're not going to have a, a an economy vehicle that's going to do 100 miles per gallon at full throttle. It's not going to happen. So that's our groundwork there. We have to have a carburetor on an engine which will make a, which will allow a car to have a decent top speed a decent cruising speed and a zero to 60 in 10 seconds or less with two people in. That's what it's got to do. Oh, and it's got to do it at a constant speed on a, a flat road like a freeway. None of this coasting downhill and things like this. No trick driving. You get to the speed you're going to do your 100 miles per gallon at and you just drive it there until you've shown 100 miles per gallon. Now, if any of you so-called 100 miles per gallon guys out there can do that, show me. I'll make you famous for 15 minutes. But I'm going to guarantee that nobody in the next month calls up and says, I've got it. Nobody. Right, now let's get on with what we've got to do here. First thing is, how much energy does it take to do 100 miles per gallon at a constant speed. Well, you have to pick your speed. Now, let me say back in the, back in 75, I was part of a group that did an economy engine on a British Leyland Mini. That's the original Mini Cooper uh, deal. And tested at the Motor Industries Research Association, we managed to get 
55 miles per gallon at 55 miles an hour, steady speed. No lifting off the throttle or anything like that. Oh, and it was a wet road, so it would have done better in the dry. So, that was the, that's the goal at the moment. I'm going to show you how we could beat it. So I want, what I want you to do here is watch this series as I go through and show all the things that are not so and all the things that are actually so, starting at the next edition. Thank you for watching. I will see you in part two.